Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus again today. This is episode 5 of 5 for our series on Paranormal! So make sure you watch the other four episodes that have already come up in this series, because that way this one will make more sense. I'm Trace, by the way, didn't mention that yet. So, so far we've talked about what paranormal even means and where that came from. We've also looked at what paranormal research has been done and how science has done that kind of research. We've even looked at how science sometimes can't disprove what people believe in paranormal activity areas. And of course, today we're gonna talk about why you should even care about paranormal. What is the importance of the paranormal when it comes to science? If you haven't subscribed to DNews Plus yet, please do that right now. I know a lot of you aren't subscribed. I look at our analytics. I know you're out there. So at least like half of you don't subscribe to the show. So take a second, click that little button. You can also find this whole series and all of our other series on iTunes. It's all squished together into one long podcast. So make sure you look for that as well. So why is it important to study the paranormal? This is a big question that a lot of people have, especially after listening to this whole series, you're probably wondering, what's the importance of studying something like ghosts or UFOs or whatever? And why is it important to do that? Well, paranormal means something that science can't explain. It's paranormal, right? And maybe it can't be explained just because nobody's looked into it yet. Nobody has found the explanation. If you don't look into the fringe of science, the fringe of something, how are you ever going to know the answer? In the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, a study came out, it was very controversial, where people became less hostile in a threatening situation when they were reminded that they had religious beliefs. The journal Proceedings of the Royal Society B had a study where they found religions with multiple deities or spirits or karma-type punishments rather than more, you know, God-type punishments. People who believed in those religions had more complex societies and did better overall. Studying things like this, these paranormal beliefs, these belief systems that are built on not knowing the answers is important and it helps us find out how we fit into the world and explain the world around us. If you watched our series on hygiene, another piece of fringe science showed up throughout the entire series and that was germ theory. Because technically for a while, you could argue that germs were considered paranormal. If I walked up to somebody in the 1600s and I said, there are little teeny things that you can't see living everywhere in and on your body and on everything in the world. Some of it is responsible for making plants grow and some of it's responsible for you getting sick. They would have thought I was crazy. But turns out that that's really what it is. <laughs> so for a long time, people thought diseases were caused by bad air, but that's not true. Knowing the answer to this fringe science, this paranormal science, helps us be healthier and live longer and be better prepared for the future. And, and all that comes from looking into stuff that is paranormal to begin with. Studying things like aliens and ghosts and ESP might seem paranormal now, but maybe there's something there, you know? Maybe we won't prove that there's the afterlife or that you're house is haunted by souls of the undead, but maybe we'll learn more about ourselves and about the world around us by looking into that. And heck, maybe we'll find out that your house is haunted by spirits of the undead and there is actually something to it. You don't know. I don't know either. Nobody knows. Maybe it'll help us understand death better or space travel or anything. You know, ESP might be something. Who knows until we look into it. Essentially, what I'm saying is don't just write off people that are looking scientifically at things that you would deem silly or fake. For example, let me just give you another one here. We used to think that the sun orbited the earth, right? That the earth was the center of the universe and even that the earth was flat. Nobody believes that anymore, right? Sorry, Tia Tequila and B.O.B. You can come on the show and talk about it if you want. We can debate. It's fine. Anyway, exploring things that people thought were true to find out that they were false, that's fringe science. That is paranormal research. If everyone believed that the Earth was flat and then one person or a team of people went out to prove otherwise, they would be considered paranormal researchers, right? So yeah, there are things that we can't answer with science now. So it's important to keep an open mind and try and be able to grasp concepts that are outside of scientific reasoning at the moment. But I'm not saying go all the way out, right? Let's not just run in the direction of out there paranormal stuff. It's important to also be skeptical. And while it is hard, it's good to do both at the same time, if you can. Remember the conspiracy series? It, there's a downside to being too open-minded. That's all we're saying. A healthy dose of skepticism is always a plus. A D-news plus, if you will. 
Matthew Hudson wrote a book, The Seven Laws of Magical Thinking. You might not think that you are a magical thinker. Maybe you're a heavy skeptic and you're like, Trace, this is stupid. There's no reason for us to even think about ghosts and believe in ghosts. That's just people being weird. When was the last time you were rolling dice and you thought that you could do something to change what the dice were doing? In this book, they found that craps players throw the dice harder when they want certain numbers. That's magical thinking. That's me thinking that if I do something, I can change the laws of the universe. Magical thinking. They don't believe in magic necessarily. They know the odds. They know what happens when they throw the dice, but they believe that they can control it. And some part of us in our humanity wants to control this stuff that we don't understand. You know, some people believe wearing a certain pair of socks on certain days or, you know, during certain sporting events will help them win or that blowing on their dice will help, you know, or having somebody else do it will help you roll the right number or even sitting in a bar in your hometown and shouting at a box full of lights will help affect what is happening in another city somewhere else on the planet. All of that is magical thinking. You're not doing anything. You're sitting in a bar yelling at a thing but we still do it. We do it all the time, and it's amazing. Skepticism is super important when we're thinking about the paranormal as well, but so is having an open mind. And so far we've talked about how a lot of this stuff isn't true and how science has proven it not to be true. And some people are gonna believe what they wanna believe regardless of whether or not we can prove it otherwise, right? Think global warming and certain members of our Congress. Think about conspiracy theories, like we mentioned earlier, even though we've proven we've landed on the moon in a number of different ways, there are people who still believe otherwise. There are pictures that other countries who have no interest in proving that the United States landed on the moon, they have pictures of us and our stuff just sitting there on the moon. They made those pictures public. You can go Google them. Still won't have people believing. They'll think that you know we paid them or something. And sometimes people just won't believe you. Some people have actually made it their life goal to disprove and question the paranormal, to debunk. One of those people is a very famous man named Houdini. In 1920, a lot of people were into the spirit world. You know, seances were a big deal, crystal balls, psychics, contacting dead relatives. All of these things were important. It was helping us kind of grasp the complicated world around us. And as things got more and more complicated into the 20th century, these supernatural things were one way that we could kind of escape from it, right? And Houdini, after his mom died, uh, desperately tried to contact his mother. He believed that these people might have some semblance of truth. And it turned out, unsurprisingly, crystal balls and seances and psychics were all pretty much frauds. He only came across frauds. And that made Houdini pretty upset because he, like many others, had paid good money for a service that he thought that they were providing, which wasn't even real. And that angered him. And it actually angers me thinking about it. Like, that just makes me, it makes me kind of incensed that that's a thing that People will take advantage of each other in that way. Today, this is still going on. There's a magician named The Amazing Randy. I'm just gonna leave that alone. He continues that fight, and like Houdini, hates fake mediums. His nemesis is this guy, Yuri Geller, who's a self-proclaimed psychic and would go on TV and say he could bend spoons with his mind. So The Amazing Randy tried to expose Geller, bent a spoon on stage two, and didn't say how he did it, but said that this was a trick. He's telling you it's a trick and he's doing it for you, showing that this stuff isn't real. That doesn't mean that it's not important to go see a magician once in a while and to like play in this open-minded magical thinking world. That's an important thing. It's part of human nature. It makes us feel fantastic, right? Helps us open our mind. But for 60 years, the amazing Randy has been offering cash for any proof of the paranormal because he can grasp both the skepticism and the open-mindedness without taking advantage of people. And so far, he's not had to give out any cash. Randy had early success pretending that he was a psychic and he saw how easy it was to exploit people, how open-minded and non-skeptical so many people are because we've always had this fascination with contacting dead relatives or wanting predictions or wanting guidance in our lives. This is a big complicated world. So Randy started predicting things like World Series wins and obviously that piqued the interest of people in news and in gambling, but now he recognizes that it's better to be honest about it being a trick, an illusion, 
unlike Geller, who thinks that he can just make money, potentially. If you're not skeptical, and if you don't also allow yourself to have some semblance of magical thinking, you're going to end up in a situation where you're going to be deceived. You're going to experience fraud. You could potentially get into trouble. And no offense to the X-Files, but wanting to believe doesn't make something real. And that goes for stuff like faith healers, too, which notoriously take advantage of lots of people who want to understand the paranormal better, so they hand over their money to people who are believers like them. And they take their money, and then they claim that they'll pull tumors and cancers out of their body, or that laying their hands on them will help them heal. And this is all supernatural power, but what does this have in common with Yuri Geller and people who were doing seances in the 20s and all of these different people who are taking advantage of our open-mindedness when it comes to the paranormal? Well, it has in common fame, money, deception, secrets, and just taking advantage of people's gullibility. There's also another thing uh, when it comes to skepticism versus open-mindedness that's important to keep kind of top of mind, and that is paranormal tourism. Everybody loves Loch Ness. Nobody really knows why they love Loch Ness. I've been to Loch Ness. It was cool. I didn't see any like weird things there. Is that a scam? Are the people of Loch Ness scamming me because they're like, oh, the Loch Ness monster? Or is it just fun? Is it just good, harmless fun? You know, the modern day Bigfoot myth, it's perpetuated by that famous movie clip, which came out as a fake years later. You know, the dude walking and turning into the woods and whatever. People go on tours to try and find Bigfoot, and they spend money to look for him. Is that a scam? Should we treat that as a scam? I think it all depends on whether you are a believer, whether you want to believe, and then how people take advantage of that belief. Are people laughing with you or laughing at you? It's amazing to believe that there's still undiscovered things in the world, that there's still magic. It's part of the things that I love about my job is that the deeper I dig into some of these scientific concepts, like string theory and black holes and, you know, all of this crazy theoretical physics, the more it seems kind of just like, we don't know the answer, so it's kind of magic. <laughs> like, it just does this. There's just another universe next door to us. Don't worry about how it got there or why it's there. Just know that it's there. Feels magical. But eventually, while paranormal now, hopefully, we'll have an answer someday. In the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, there was a study that claimed that ESP was real. There was a lot of flaws in the research. It's a very respected journal, but somehow this study got in it. And people believed it, but other researchers came out and said, no, 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 here are all the flaws in the research, because we want to believe in magical thinking. You want to know if this is real. We want it to be real. We want to believe. Think about every prank video, every magician you've ever watched, everybody who can make your face just light up, because for just a hot second, they made you think that something that you thought was impossible was possible. It's like the best feeling in the world. So maybe there's no harm in touring a haunted house that may or may not be haunted, going on a ghost tour. If that's what you want to believe, go for it. But if you make a crop circle in your cornfield to try and make money and tell people that it was aliens, that's just fraud. You're just, you're just lying. If you put a fake image of Jesus on your toast, <laughs> that's dishonest, and it's taking advantage of this tendency of us to want to believe which is why we should all have an open mind. There are some things that can't be explained by science. We should embrace that. It's awesome. It's cool. I love it. And yet, we should always ask questions. We should always ask another question because there's always one more that you can ask. And it would be a boring world to live in if we had the explanation for all of it, wouldn't it? What do you guys think? Before you go, you may have noticed we have these awesome boxes here. That is the Conspiracy series that we mentioned earlier and the Hygiene series. If you haven't watched those, go check them out. They're super awesome. You can also go find a random one of our episodes. We have so many different episodes here on DNews Plus so far, and we're only going to keep making more. So let us know also down in the comments if you have any ideas for future series, and we'll see you next time on DNews Plus.